You've been waiting for it and asking for it. What is my final prediction going to be for Auburn football's 2023 season? Let's go game by game and put the record on the record. War Eagle and welcome back to the channel. My name's Kyle here at E2C Network where we share the Auburn experience. As you're watching or listening today, be sure to drop a comment down below about this particular topic. We'd love to hear your thoughts as we're sharing ours. Admittedly, I have taken a long time to put this out there, but there's good reason for that. When by final prediction, I have waffled back and forth. A lot of optimism for Auburn football this year potentially, but there's also a lot of reality that you have to factor into a decision like this as well. For me though, I think I've finally settled on it and I wanna jump into it with you on a game by game basis. And that way it's out there for posterity. You can come back and show me how wrong I was or maybe how right I was too. Game one for Auburn football is UMass. And I know a lot of people see this name come across and they say, hey, look, you know, Auburn's gonna win this game. And the reality is probably yes, but this is not a case and this is not a state of a program where you can dismiss anybody at this point. Even in a first game where Auburn's still trying to get its foundation set too. They've already played one particular game. Even with all that being said, every caveat that you could mention, I'm going to say that Auburn wins this one convincingly by the end of it. Even if things get a little bit rocky to start off with, they'll pull away eventually. Game number two, we're heading all the way out to California to play the Cal Golden Bears in the first matchup of its kind with these two teams, but also the last time that we will see the Pac-12, Pac whatever it currently is and is going to be. But even with all that in mind, there's going to be a lot of logistics and planning and just preparation practice that's going to go into play with traveling so far for this team. And obviously that could play havoc with what this team is trying to lay in terms of a foundation. I do think that Auburn is going to beat Cal, but I think it's going to be a lot closer than most people are thinking it's going to be, just given the nature of having to travel so far with this team still trying to find its identity but it's still a win. Game number three, we are welcoming someone that we are very familiar with, a lot of ties out there, just down the road in Birmingham, the Sanford Bulldogs. And it is the homecoming game, so all the good feels will be around on campus, and it is a night game with some nice new effects gonna be probably in full display that night. It's just going to be too much for the Sanford Bulldogs. Let's be honest. We don't even need to talk much further about it. That's a win for Auburn. Game number four for Auburn is its biggest yet, and it's starting a gauntlet. We go out to Kyle Field to play Texas A&M. Now, when you look at Texas A&M, you really don't know what to make of them currently. They literally have every resource, all the talent they could want, and they still fail. Jimbo Fisher still finds a way to fail. It's really an interesting dynamic there. With all that in mind and the momentum that I think Auburn's going to be carrying after the first three games, I think they go and shock the world and take down Texas A&M in College Station to at least get one win out of this major gauntlet they're going through. Game number five is Auburn's biggest yet, but let's be honest, I already said that each one of these is probably going to get worse and worse for Auburn. The Deep South's oldest rivalry comes to town. Georgia is in Jordan-Hare Stadium. We'll be celebrating the 1983 team. It's going to be a lot of hype around this week, especially if Auburn's undefeated and Georgia remains undefeated as expected. In fact, this might be the college game day game of the week, which would be really interesting and make the hype even more for this weekend. We don't know a lot about Georgia, except to expect that they're going to be dominant still. So given all of that and what we know about Auburn currently, I just kind of have to go with my gut here and say that Auburn's going to take its first loss to Georgia at home, but in a very, very close game. Game number six up next. Well, technically we had a bye week, but I guess we won that one. This one is going to be in Baton Rouge for the LSU Tigers, continuing that gauntlet. LSU is likely going to be a heavy candidate for the SEC West, but the SEC in general and just college football overall. I do think that Auburn's going to face a humongous challenge here with a Brian Kelly coach team. I think that they are legit with what we know at this point, currently talking about all these teams. So I do think that Auburn's going to face a tough test in Baton Rouge and likely, likely will not be able to make a streak in Baton Rouge, but at least we ended it two seasons ago. So it'll be a loss in Baton Rouge. Want to take a quick second to remind you of an opportunity to help support us here at E2C Network. You can do that by joining the Conquer Club. You can do that two different ways by joining up on YouTube. Hit the join button below and you can sign up for $1 a month to get started onto our Discord server and much more. 
If you don't want to do it through YouTube, you can go to patreon.com slash E2C Network. It's the exact same thing with the exact same perks. Check that out there. We'd love to have you as part of that little special community within our little Auburn family. Game number seven, Lane Kiffin comes to town with Ole Miss. There's been a lot of animosity developing between Auburn and Ole Miss fans and all the like of that's been going on in the offseason. So this is going to be a prime matchup, which may be a night game given all that's going to be around it, especially if Auburn is better than average and then especially if Ole Miss maintains what we think they're capable of. Much like Texas A&M, this team can literally swing hot or cold. Lane Kiffin could find a way to be dominant, but also find a way to screw things up. So it'll be interesting to see. I do think, though, that somehow, some way, unfortunately, Ole Miss is going to spoil the 1993 celebration game and find a way at the very last second to break Auburn's hearts at home. I hate admitting this, but I got to find some losses somewhere that I think are reality. I think, unfortunately, this may be one of those surprises. Game number eight couldn't have come at a better time. The gauntlet is done. Mississippi State comes to town. No offense, Mississippi State Bulldogs, but y'all got a lot going on this year. We're all sad that Mike Leach is not here with us anymore. Zach Garnett will get things going at some point. I just don't think it's going to be this season. A lot riding on this game for Auburn with the two years ago debacle of losing the game the way they did in Jordan Hare and then nearly getting the upset win for Cadillac Williams' first win last season as the interim head coach. I think they're just going to blow them out, take the frustrations of the last three games. Auburn wins this one. Game number nine, the jokes just write themselves as Vanderbilt. We're going to play them in Nashville if they actually have somewhere to play. I mean, they could hardly find the end zone as it is as a program without actually missing an end zone. But all that aside, Auburn's going to take over Nashville if they haven't already. I do think Auburn gets a pretty easy win and takes down Vanderbilt for their second win in a row. In game 10, Auburn stays on the road, this one to the Arkansas Razorbacks. And much like Ole Miss, there's been a lot of animosity that's built amongst Auburn and Arkansas over the last few seasons, whether it was because Gus dominated them or controversial calls or non-controversial calls. We can debate that all day. Listen, this one is going to be a knockdown drag out fight, especially since it's in Fayette. Unfortunately, I think this might be a little bit of a trap game for Auburn here after riding a little bit of momentum over the last two games. For right now, I just don't know what to make of them, and especially being on the road. I'm going to say Arkansas sneaks out a win up against Auburn here. We made it to game 11. New Mexico State comes to town. And of course, you definitely have to have these for senior day to kind of gear up for what's coming next. I think a lot of frustrations are going to be taken out against New Mexico State by Auburn in Jordan-Hare Stadium. And just like with UMass, Sanford, Vanderbilt, this is one that Auburn should easily handle and get the win. And finally, in game 12, the big one, the Iron Bowl, Auburn versus Alabama, the best college sports rivalry what's the we kidding it's the best rivalry in sports period we can have that debate easily a big one for either team given how their seasons might be going at this point probably huge implications for one team or maybe both teams i see this one as it always is you throw this record book out you throw everything that you think you know about these teams out this one is going to be a great game down to the wire and with the kick six all the hype of that 10-year anniversary being around this I do think that the Auburn Tigers take down the mighty Crimson Tide in Jordan-Hare Stadium and end their season on a very high note, at least the regular season. So there you have it, my regular season prediction, eight and four with a lot of highs, but yes, a few lows there too in the first year under Hugh Freeze. I do think that that gives us into a pretty decent bowl, obviously not in the SEC championship game, but a decent bowl game. And I will go and predict that we get a win there for a final record overall of nine and four, which is a solid start for the Hugh Freeze era and the Auburn Tigers. Now I want to hear from you, your thoughts about what I just predicted, but of course, I want to know your final season predictions too for Auburn football. As always, check out the links in the description here on YouTube for ways that you can help support us. If you're not here on YouTube, you found us some other way, make sure you visit e2cnetwork.com slash support for ways to help support too. We always appreciate you being here and spending time with us here at E2C Network, where we share the Auburn experience. War Eagle.